Hi there, this is Bob from Insidium. This is the final part of our particle Christmas tree tutorial series. So in this video we're going to take our three different simulation styles and we're going to combine them. We'll do some particle retiming techniques using the cache object and then we'll finalize our render settings for export. Here we are then in our final scene setup. This is where we left it in our last tutorial and the system that we have active is our uh, texture emit system with our particles nicely flowing upwards in this nice swirly motion. So this is one of our kind of fine detail systems. What we want to do is render this one with all of our others. So let's just disable this one for now so we can have a look at the other two. We also have the first system that we set up, this flow spline system and if we open up this you can see this is cached as well and we can play that and our particles are nicely moving up and swirling up our tree so that's looking pretty sweet um, now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to just adjust the um, point at which these caches start so they're all playing at the appropriate point in the simulation so for example right at the beginning the first few frames of this the first 100 frames we, we don't want anywhere near the render because this is just the simulation getting to the nice point here where we're getting that good um, animation so how do we do that how do we change where this cache plays from well it's quite simple look we wanted to start let's say at frame 113 so all we need to do is go to our cache tags, let's highlight them both, and we need to override the playback, and look, we want to offset the playback. At the moment it's just starting on frame 0, we want it to start on a frame 113, and that means that when our playhead is on frame 0, the cache is playing what was saved at frame 113. So now if we hit play right at the beginning of our scene, we're straight into that good animation of our snow particles. So that's going to work perfectly for us. And it's always a good idea when you're offsetting caches uh, to press this hold button and have that active. And what that means is, if for example, we'd only cached 500 frames and then the playhead gets past frame 500, if hold isn't selected, it will then kick in and try and start re-simming those particles, which can cause problems. If you click on hold, it'll just hold the last frame of that cache uh, forever. But there, look, so we get to the end of the cache around here, but because we pressed hold, it just holds that last frame. Okay, and we can leave that all as is for now. So let's just minimize uh, that. Let's open our spline wrap um, simulation. We'll activate this. So our spline wrap was wrapping our particles and look our particles have gone a bit weird here and that's because remember we have cached these particles with our spline wrap deformer deforming them onto our helix but we now have this spline wrap still active so it's trying to deform them a second time. So if we switch that off you'll see that our particles will go in the right position and there we have that working as we would expect and that those are those particles working perfectly in the scene and just to remind ourselves this obviously is all cached if we go to our emitters we are playing these at half speed so in these um, emitter tags we have overridden the playback and they're not playing at 100% speed they're playing at half speed because that was looking better for our simulation so each one of those three tags are set to half speed but we want to offset these as well because we want them to start with our particles already right at the top so somewhere about there look 646 so with all of those selected here let's make sure look we've got hold selected which is good and let's offset them by 646 frames and now if we go back to the beginning we have these particles filling our simulation right from the first frame. Very nice. So now that one is set up. We can minimize that system. And then our final systems are texture emit, which we've already looked at. So we'll click that on. And we have our texture emit particles. 
There we go. Let's just make sure we've kind of got a decent camera position here. Something like that. And now we have got all of these particles working in the same sim together. So that's looking really cool. And these are already all set up with textures. If we have a look at our emitters, we have uh, instance tags for Cycles 4D where necessary. We have our material tags for the lights as well. So everything should be ready to go. So let's do a quick real-time preview test render. Now we've got so many hundreds of thousands of particles in the scene here. It's going to take a while to, uh, to render. But let's just get an idea of how this is looking. So we'll click on real-time preview. We'll hit play. It's going to load in those particles and then actually look we're getting pretty decent speed here despite the fact we've got so many particles look it's flying through our 20 samples and this is looking really good um, not any noise our reflections are looking good so I think we are good to go to keep these render settings as they are that's looking fantastic and we're getting really good render speed there okay so let's shut this down let's go to our Insidium. We'll go to uh, actually no, we'll go to our render obviously because we're going to do our global render settings. So we'll edit our render settings. We have the same render settings set up from the previous tutorial. We have Cycles 4D set up as our renderer. Our output we're going to render from frame zero through to frame, let's say frame 200, and we'll just keep it at 720 uh, square. Uh, render and let's go to we're not going to bother saving it uh, you obviously can save it to um, your drive so if you wanted to save you just go into save click this and then enter the file path to where you want to save your files but I'm not going to bother saving and then we'll go to our cycles 4d settings we have optics selected under the device I have an optics enabled GPU so this will be much quicker you can choose um, CUDA if you don't have an optics or even use the CPU for rendering Everything else is default, apart from we have our samples locked in at 20 samples. So that's looking pretty good. Let's just have a look. Everything else is default. So we'll leave that as it is. Close that down. So let's go to our render option and we'll render to picture viewer. Uh, yes, we're fine to continue without saving. I'm happy with that. So let's press yes. This will start rendering, so it'll load in the particles for the first frame, and then, look, we're getting really fast render times. We're getting three or four, four seconds per frame. So I'll leave this rendering. Once it's finished, I'll come back to you, and we'll see how long it took, and we'll have a look at our final render. And that render's finished now. It took 15 minutes and 17 seconds to complete, so really quick, actually. Only four seconds of frame, and if we hit play, we're getting this fantastic animation. And remember, this is our three different simulation rigs here, giving us these different looks. And you can see the, um, the detail, the wispy detail that our texture emit uh, simulation brings adding that on the end is really great but the whole thing is looking good we've got good quality render here no noise our various different bauble materials are looking good the lights really help um, to sell this Christmassy scene and I'm really pleased with that I think that's looking fantastic